So here I've got a uh, Voigtlander Vito B camera and I got this one quite cheaply. Um, it didn't work at all when I got it which is not surprising. It's quite dusty as you can see and the lens in particular looks quite uh, quite unappetizing. So uh, first thing I'm going to do here is just try and clean that lens. See if I can um, get it to look like it'll ever take a photo. That'll be a good start. So I'll start with some glass cleaner on a cotton bud and I'll see what I can do. First I start off very lightly. I want to lift off the loose dust I've already flicked over this with a paintbrush that rubbish didn't lift off easily you can see by the colour of this it's very very dirty it's important to get all the dust and grit off that lens very gently. You want to lift it off on the cotton bud. Do not grind it into the glass otherwise you will end up scratching it. That's starting to... there's still a lot of dirt coming off here but it's starting to look a bit better. Now I'm judging this by reflected window light from my right ear to see what sort of what state the glass is in. There's still a lot of marks on there. It does look more like a smear than um, anything else at this stage. It's also possible that there are marks on the inside surface of the lens that's by no means impossible so that's a bit better I can still see marks there a toothpick here to use as a pointer right so there are certainly marks in the coating at this point and here it, there's general marks in the coating the coating certainly not particularly good looking I'll try cleaning around that front name ring see if any of that rubbish lifts I'm using some naphtha to do this That's very dirty. It sort of suggests that the camera spent years sitting on an open shelf somewhere. I think that lens is certainly usable in that state. It may well clean better than that once I've got it all apart. But that's by no means certain. So the camera, as it came to me, the camera didn't work at all. Now the shutter in these cameras is cocked by the action of the film being drawn through on the take-up spool. And it, that rotates the sprocket wheel here. And the action of that will cock the shutter. And there you go, the shutter cocked and fired. When I first got it, it wouldn't work. 
And what I did was I used my usual diagnostic trick for leaf blade shutters that don't want to do anything. Warm the whole lot up with a hairdryer. Let the heat soak into it and try it again. Often they're stuck with um, oils or other dried grease or something like that. And by heating them up, basically you make the oils less viscous. They may let go. Once the shutter's fired once, it may well continue to do so, at least until the camera cools right down. This one's remained sort of working, so that's a good sign. It means that the camera will probably respond to a service and be a useful camera from there on in. It, there's a lot of marks in here. It's... Um, Mildew marks, I would think, by the looks of that. So, next trick, I suppose, is how to get into the camera. Well, most people are interested, of course, in the shutter and how you get into that first. So we'll, we'll investigate that. Well, this Vito B has a uh, Prontor SVS shutter. And the lens is a Color Scope R 50mm f2.8. Now, this name ring here that is just screwed into the front, and a friction tool will get that loose. There are no holes there to engage a tool. Yeah, that's spinning out okay now. Alright, so what have we got here? Well, the whole front lens group came out. Let's see what else we've got here. Does that get us any further ahead? Well, it gives us access to the inside of this lens, I suppose. That's one useful thing. But it doesn't get us any deeper into the shutter. So on this particular camera, I'm going to loosen these three screws around here on the focus scale ring and uh, see if that gets us any deeper. Can't say I'm feeling much improvement there. Oh, we go. With the lens lifted out, which I didn't do, the uh, front of the ring here, that lifted straight out. Now this ring here has been loosened up by me loosening those three screws, I think. Yes, it has. So we can lift that out. I'll just two those screws up, put them back in so that they don't back right out and get lost. Let's see what we're up to now. Three heads three screws visible there. That black ring I think is our infinity stop. Remove those. Ah, uh, loosen those. I think there's a nut on the back of that. It's probably fallen off that one now. Just loosen those screws. Yes it was. Right. Now, can we tighten that up and unscrew the whole lens? Let's try that again. Uh, 
and it's not doing it for me. I'm not holding my mouth right. Let's lift this off. Oh, yeah, the nuts came out from underneath. Yeah, there were three clamps, one of which has now fallen off. I should have been able to back that up and then turn it around a little bit more until I could get the lens off. There's our lens coming out of the thread. See that extremely coarse helical thread there? That's our lens unit. We can pop the front group back into there to keep all this together. And here's the uh, camera and the shutter. Now, things to note. The first thing I note here is that the infinity stops being bent over. Somebody has tried to twist a lens off the front of the camera. I'll have to look closely at that. That'll need to be straightened back up, I would say. So to get into the shutter, undo that lock screw. And then the retaining ring, which is only aluminium, can be unscrewed. And you're best to do this with a toothpick or a bamboo skewer or something of that nature, if you possibly can. Because if you start using a metal tool, as I'm about to do, you risk scratching things and making a mess. Here I'm using a pair of tweezers and that got that loose. Those tweezers have got quite blunt tips on them. If they were very fine tweezers I just I would have just broken my tweezers. Let's lift off that uh, retaining ring. Lift off this front plate. Now that stop was riveted in there and you can see where it's riveted in there and there, I can straighten that up. I'll have to push that back into place and re rivet that slightly so it'll stay there into the shutter. So the front ring that's our um, shutter speed cam ring. This is complete, it's got all the speeds marked on the outside, and we're straight into the shutter. So shutters quite commonly um, are built into a case. They have a round case and they're built down into it. Here you can see all the works are completely exposed on that mechanism plate. We don't have anything around here at all. It was all just hidden under here. I'm looking to see if there's anything particularly unusual about this. It just looks like a pretty bog standard uh, Prontor SV hit to me. SVS is it? Yeah. And, well you might as well watch the action as it cocks I suppose. Let's open the back of the camera. I'll rotate the the sprocket wheel here and you'll see that the shutter cocked there. Latched into position. And as I press the shutter release here, you'll see it transfers the action to this point, which lifts this arm, which eventually moves this piece away from the main cam here, which it's just doing now, and allows the shutter to run. That's running a bit slow, that's hardly surprising. If it runs at all, it's doing quite well. So this I want to strip. But really I want more access than this. I don't want to be building it on, in fact I can't really, build it on that plate. So the first, next thing I want to do is pop that back in place while I'm thinking about it. It's getting worse and worse. That's better. I've got to take note of where these levers come from since they're just sitting there, they're not trapped. They're only trapped in once the, the cover's on there. That one's keyed into this arm here. This one's just sitting there. I 
I'll just take this one off its post. There's no washer in that position. Often in prong tool shutters there's a washer in that position. There was none. So the retard gear train is held in with two screws here and another one which in this case is under there. I'm going to cock the shutter to expose that. One here and one there. If your problem is related to the retard gear train perhaps being a bit dusty and reluctant to move, this was it would be as deep as you needed to get into it. But this, I can tell by its lacklustre performance, really needs to be cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner and it won't be the only problem this camera has. So I'll be digging very deep into it. So this part here, that's our um, self timer or delay action. I'll unhook its spring from the post here. I can get that off. And unhook it from the other end. This will be held in place with at least one screw, sometimes two depending on the design of these things. It looks like one there. which has a very thin head, a very flat head on it. Not to be mixed up with the one on the um, retard gear train. And there's a long screw goes through here. And that allows me to take that gear train off the shutter completely. There's no point digging any deeper into that at the moment. I really want to remove the whole shutter assembly from the camera. To do that, I need to lift these leatherettes. And how smoothly that'll go, it's a bit hard to know. I'll start here, see if I can slide my scalp under it. I can. That lifted off very easily. We'll try the other side. Okay, that's good. These strap lugs here may have been put on over the top of the leatherettes. I can't see slots in the leatherette where they were. Oh, well, you might be able to get these off, stretch it off. Yeah, it's over like a button. I'd rather have the leatherettes off completely because they'll get damaged if they're flapping around. I'll stretch that over there again. That's good. Alright. So far, so good. I can see six screws here. The two here, the ones in the middle on each side, look like they hold this surround down, this chrome piece. Have them off and see what happens. That might be a trim piece that'll lift away easily. It is. It doesn't get us any deeper in there and it doesn't cause us any problems. There's a little piece of metal here, a little uh, metal shield that sits over that lever. Its job is to keep dust and dirt out from the shutter. These four screws on the front of the camera. Let's see if the shutter will lift off now. It's not showing much sign of it.
I can't tell whether that's tucked down under that bottom edge there. No. Alright, some other secret here I think. I've certainly got the six screws off that I can see. It may be held down by the top cover. So the top cover is going to need to come off. So let me just close up the base of the camera and get this top cover off. Get my rewind to pop up for me where I can do something useful with it. Oh, it's got a lever on the side here, hasn't it? Of course it has. Okay, let's try that screw in the middle, see if that unscrews. Well, how far, how deep does that get us? Not very deep, it just got us in as far as the, um, here we go, it's just popped off. Just needed a bit of helping hand, see it's got a spring under that. And the, let's open the base of the camera. That's the centre of our rewind there. That couples to the piece that couples to the, um, top of the film cartridge. There you can see it there. This piece. That's trapped but that's driven by this piece. Now the top cover. How's that held? Well it looks like there's a screw here. So we'll have that out. What about at the other end? Is there anything visible there? Not from inside the camera there's not. What about under the flash shoe? Single screw here. See if that does anything for us. Yes. Top cover is off. The shutter release button will lift off. Now, will the front of the camera lift out now? Yes. Here we go. Here's our shutter free from the camera body. So, without disturbing anything else, if we were just working on the shutter, we'll put the body to one side. My, my work pad here is absolutely covered in grit and dust. But here's our shutter. This whole section here effectively acts as like a shutter case. So I'm going to take great note of where everything goes there because I want this out. I want the, all of this apart. I need to be able to pull this apart to split this and get the shutter blades out so I can clean the shutter blades, the back of the mechanism plate and everything else and get those shutter blades working correctly. But so far, it's all looking pretty simple. 